normal values for ecg will depend on the age body size gender as well as the population being assessed so there is a wide variation still in a normal adult population some normal values are useful while assessing an ecg these are the normal waves which you expect on the ecg and normal heart rate in an adult is 60 to 100 per minute p wave the atrial activation pr segment qrs complex ventricular activation st segment and t wave ventricular repolarization atrial repolarization wave is usually not seen in a standard surface ecg it will be somewhere in the st segment and part of the qrs of low amplitude usually the ta wave that is the atrial repolarization wave is not seen in a surface ecg this is p wave this is qrs complex and t wave a segment does not include a wave pr segment st segment but an interval includes one or more waves and a segment pr interval will include p wave and pr segment qt interval will include qrs complex and st segment as well as the t wave so interval includes one or more waves and one segment while segment is without a wave and there is another one which is not represented here part of it is seen here that is the tp segment previous t to the current p that is a true isoelectrical interval isoelectric interval in the ecg true isoelectric interval in the ecg is tp segment while pr and st are not even though it is shown as isoelectric in this diagram they are not truly isoelectric because pr segment will contain a negative component of the ta wave and st segment is usually slowly upsloping so that it merges with the ascending limb of the t wave this is the rr interval interval between peaks of two r waves pp interval from the onset of one p wave to the onset of the next p wave from the pp interval you can calculate the atrial rate from the rr interval you can calculate the ventricular rate usually we calculate rr interval and calculate the ventricular rate and say that it is the heart rate presuming that both are equal but in conditions like complete heart block it may be different pp interval will be shorter and rr interval will be longer in complete heart block otherwise in most cases they are equal in normal sinus rhythm and this will vary with the heart rate when the heart rate increases both pp interval and rr interval shortens in general all the intervals shorten with increase in heart rate but the change the change in the intervals will be more for pp interval and rr interval compared to the other intervals for the same reason these two intervals will be shorter in children compared to adults the younger the child shorter the pp interval and rr interval as the heart rate is higher in newborn heart rate may be around 140 per minute while in an adult it may be only about 70 per minute and in a well trained athlete it may be uh, even as low as 40 per minute normal p wave dimensions are easy to remember both the height of p wave or amplitude of p wave and width of p wave are 2.5 mm in a standard ecg meaning that an ecg recorded at a paper speed of 
25 millimeters per second the p width of 2.5 millimeter will correspond to 100 milliseconds when you express as time and if it is more than that you can say that p is widened and it occurs in left atrial enlargement height of the p wave more than 2.5 millimeter occurs in right atrial enlargement if both height and width are increased it is bi atrial enlargement pr interval is from the onset of p wave to the onset of the qrs complex if there is a q wave up to the onset of the q wave if there is no q wave up to the onset of the r wave that is how pr interval is calculated it includes p wave and pr segment so it is atrial conduction as well as conduction through the av node if intraatrial conduction is delayed p wave widens then also pr interval widens but most of it is contributed by atrioventricular conduction pr interval is mostly by atrioventricular conduction short pr interval occurs in wpw syndrome and long pr interval occurs in atrioventricular av block normal qrs width is also easy to remember it is up to 100 milliseconds or two and a half divisions it is taken as from the onset of the qrs complex to the end of the qrs complex then it is also known as j point the total width is the qrs duration and uh, qrs duration can be abnormal when there is a conduction abnormality intraventricular conduction abnormality like a uh, bundle branch block it is also abnormal when the focus is from the ventricle a wide qrs complex is a feature of ventricular ectopic beat as well so that is the qrs width usually 100 milliseconds when it is uh, three divisions or 120 milliseconds you can call it as wide qrs even 110 milliseconds can be taken as normal so when it is three divisions it is taken as abnormal 120 milliseconds or more of qrs width is taken as abnormal qt interval is from the onset of the qrs complex to the end of the t wave this represents the ventricular depolarization as well as repolarization measurement of qt interval is very important as qt prolongation can predispose to serious life threatening ventricular arrhythmias that is why it is now mandatory it's a regulatory requirement for any new medication being introduced for having qt testing it should be shown that there is no qt prolongation or if at all it is there that should be minimal so qt interval is uh, assessed for any new drug and it is supposed to be a billion dollar industry measurement of qt interval for the large number of drugs being tried qt prolongation leads to torsades at the points which is a very serious arrhythmia and qt interval normally that range also varies with the heart rate so you have to correct for the heart rate it, one easy value which i remember is 0.34 to 0.43 normal range but there is a difference between male and female and also between ages so you have to use a normogram to assess the qt interval more than that qt interval shortens with increase in heart rate so you have to correct the qt interval usual formula which we use is the bassett's formula which is uh, measured qt interval divided by the root of the rr interval in seconds square root of rr interval in seconds that is the bassett's formula but this formula also has limitations there is another formula known as friedrichia's formula in which qt interval is divided by the cube root of the rr interval in seconds that also has other limitations several other different logarithmic formulas are also the formulas like framingham formula or uh, there are hodges formula they are all difficult to calculate so practically at the bedside we take only bassett's formula 
Finally, we come to two segments in the ECG. PR segment, it is also known as PQ segment as it is often from P to Q. Then ST segment. These two are nearly isoelectric but not truly isoelectric. ST segment is often slightly elevated with upward concavity and it will merge towards the ascending limb of the T wave. Especially in the younger individuals, there could be mild ST elevation in anterior leads normally. So, in anterior leads, for diagnosis of ST elevation myocardial infarction, V1, the cutoff is usually 2 mm. While 1 mm is enough in other leads. When there is ST depression, even 0.5 mm is enough to consider abnormal ST. That is usually with angina and ventricular strain patterns. PR segment elevation and depression can occur in atrial infarction and pericarditis. Those are the two conditions in which PR segment can be abnormal.